This video is sponsored and approved by Current. Are there any hard feelings towards him? I, I don't know him, and I've never met him, so... So were you a fan before? Yeah. It's Kanye West. Are you still a fan? I take it now. You know, I just, I don't know him, and I don't want to start anything, because I just, you know, I had a great night tonight. At the 2009 VMAs, there were two main contenders in the category of Best Female Video. Taylor Swift's You Belong With Me and Beyonce's Single Ladies. You Belong With Me has Taylor Swift in cute glasses showing notes to her crush at the house next door. Single Ladies has Beyonce dancing in a white room. You Belong With Me has a cute and kooky 80s style outfit montage. Single Ladies has Beyonce dancing in a grey room. You Belong With Me has Taylor Swift dancing like a goofball and having a good time. Single Ladies has Beyonce dancing like one of those girls behind her is getting a bullet to the head if they make wrong step. You Belong With Me is a tale of empowerment for young girls who don't think they're good enough for the man of their dreams. Single Ladies is a tale of empowerment for women who think they're too good for the men in their lives. You Belong With Me has a range of emotions. Heartbreak, redemption, justice. Single Ladies has one emotion, Beyonce dancing in an empty room. If you ask me, there is one clear winner when discerning which of these videos is most worthy of the award of Best Female Led Music Video of 2009. However, there was one drunken and obnoxious prick who seemed to disagree. And now, a word from our sponsor. Yeah! Gang gang! Hey! Before we jump into the next part of the video, I'd like to tell you about our new sponsor, Current. Yeah! And how they can help you save money and get paid early. Getting paid early is so lit. Getting paid is so lit. Yeah. Current.com, shout out current.com, shout out current.com, cause they sponsored this one. Current.com, shout out current.com, shout out current.com, cause they sponsored this one. Yeah. Current is the mobile bank with Visa debit, debit card. Even if you're under 18, you can still get it, get it. Card. It works with both Apple and Google Pay. And direct deposit can get you paid faster in like two days. Wow. So if you're used to getting paid on Friday, switch to direct deposit with Current, you'll get paid on Wednesday, it works with Cash App and Venmo, send money to your mum, free overdraft protection up to a hundred bucks, cause if the bank charges me an overdraft fee, I'm finna wild out and just go crazy, one time I got a charge, I was only short a buck, I called up my bank, told them they can get Nothing's worse than banks charging overdraft fees And that's the reason Current.com is for me And now I've got my black card from Current.com Only took me two minutes to sign up and order one I got that brand new black card absolutely free Straight up. So sign up for Current and become a G Sign up to Current and you'll become a G All my Gs, hit that link in the description baby Sign up today, shout out Current Shout out Karen. See ya. At the 2009 VMAs, a drunken Kanye West was seen swigging from a Hennessy bottle on the red carpet. Along with former video model and future dater of British guys for clout, give me a call sometime baby, Amber Rose. Now it's hard to imagine that relationship was kind to Kanye West considering the fact that she came to this event literally dressed as a snake. By contrast, Taylor Swift turned up to this event with a touch more class than Yeezy, arriving in a horse and carriage like Cinderella at the player haters ball. And when Taylor deservedly won the award for her genuinely good music video, she went on up to the podium to deliver her acceptance speech. And the Moon Man for Best Female Video goes to... Taylor Swift. This was her well-earned moment in the spotlight, something that she might have imagined for years growing up. A true dream come true for any musician trying to make their mark. And for a moment, it was going pretty well. Thank you so much! I always dreamed about what it would be like to maybe win one of these someday, but I never actually thought that would happen. Uh, I sing country music, so thank you so much for giving me a chance to win a VMA award. I but as we all know famously, things would immediately go south as the sentient Hennessy bottle himself would soon ruin this young star's moment in the spotlight with his opinions. Yo, Taylor, I I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. 
Yes, according to Yeezy, that music video of Beyonce dancing with two randos in an empty room is apparently much better than Taylor's video. You know, Taylor's video that had a narrative, a storyline, several different locations, and a genuinely positive and empowering message. But no, according to Ye, Beyonce's video is one of the best of all time. Remember the iconic Thriller video where Michael Jackson turned into a werewolf and did one of the most iconic dances humanity has ever seen? Well, apparently Beyonce and Aleotard dancing in an empty room is just as good, if not better than that. Oh wow, they got a crane and even the behind the scenes is in black and white. That means it's an art. Oh, and it's all one long take. Well, it isn't, but at least it looks like it. How impressive. It's like 1917 with tits. And let's just skirt over the fact that she stole the entire idea of this video from a 1969 music video called Mexican Breakfast. Wow, isn't Jake Nava such a fucking genius director? Stealing a 40 year old idea? Oh, but we're gonna put it in black and white and have leotards. How genius creative. Anyway, after Kanye West, stupid dumb rant, Taylor was left on stage dumbfounded and humiliated with no idea what to do next. Frankly, a disgusting situation to put anyone in. I, I was standing on stage and I was really excited because I had just won the award and then I was really excited because Kanye West was on the stage and then I, um, then I wasn't so excited anymore. Reports say that immediately after this, she was crying her eyes out backstage. But the discomfort wasn't yet over. Because a salient fact that seems to be frequently overlooked when people discuss this incident is that the whole point of this interruption was Kanye West trying to stick up for Beyonce, who in his opinion had the best video of all time. And while I disagree and think Single Ladies is plagiarized garbage, apparently, all of this interrupting aside, the VMAs themselves actually agreed with Kanye. Because later on in the show, Beyonce herself was actually awarded best music video for Single Ladies. An award that frankly supersedes best female video. And pretty much completely invalidating Kanye West's earlier interruption anyway. And the Moon Man for video of the year goes to... Beyonce! And furthermore, the unintended consequence of Kanye's boneheaded and premature sticking up for Beyonce is the fact that it completely ruined Beyonce's moment in the spotlight as well. Where was Solange with the roundhouse kicks that night, eh? So when Beyonce went up to collect her award for best music video, she did the right thing and sacrificed her moment in the spotlight to give Taylor Swift back what Kanye had stole from her. Thank you, wow. This is amazing. I remember being 17 years old, up for my first MTV award with Destiny's Child, and it was one of the most exciting moments in my life. So I liked for Taylor to come out and have her moment. Where are you? Could try this again. I would really like to thank Roman White, who directed my video, and Lucas Till for being in it. And I would like to thank all the fans on Twitter and MySpace and everyone who came out to my shows this summer. And I would like to thank my little brother's high school for letting us shoot the video there. Thank you so much. And for the record, that's a clip that's very hard to find and has seemingly been scrubbed from the internet. Perhaps because it exposes the absurdity of this entire situation, as well as potentially threatens that established narrative that Taylor got so hard done by that night. More examples of that later. But regardless of the fact that Beyonce was essentially forced to sacrifice her moment in the sunlight to make up for Kanye's assholery, after that shocking interruption, the damage to Kanye's reputation was done. And from this point on, he would struggle for years to convince the world that he wasn't that massive douche that he had just convinced the world world first hand that he actually was. Now we've all done something stupid when we're drunk, haven't we? But just imagine for a second getting so drunk and doing something so stupid that you wake up the next day and literally the entire world fucking hates you. Because that's what happened to Kanye at that moment. Apparently when Kanye got back to his seat, fellow nominee in that category, Pink, chewed him out to his face as well as taking a fat dookie on him later on in an interview. I just think he's an idiot. He's just a waste. He's just a toolbox. And apparently Kanye himself was genuinely surprised when he was escorted out of the venue immediately after this happened. Hey, hey Kanye, 
I'm gonna let you finish, but Tiger getting thrown out of the club and trying to reach for one of his security guards' gun is one of the most embarrassing venue rejections of all time. All time. In the days that followed, despite a half-assed apology on his blog, other celebrities were lining up, knives out, ready to take pot shots at this beloved madman. Hell, even then president of the United States and former proprietor of Cuban torture camps, Barack Obama even came out and called Ye a jackass. The young lady seems like a perfectly nice person. She's getting her award. What's he doing? Why would he do that? He's a jackass. <laughs> Hey, because we all know that getting dissed by Obama is a certified career ender, right? I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. And the reason is because I have a lot of faith in the American people. Good work, America. But even more ironically, current president, current friend of Kanye West, Tronald Dump, called for him to be boycotted. In a moment that was so rich with irony, I got diabetes just looking at it. Within just a couple of days of this debacle going down, Ye actually popped up for a late night appearance with talk show host Sentient Chin and Conan O'Brien's most hated op, Jay Leno, where he kind of apologized. It was just, it was rude, period. And you know, I'd like to be able to apologize to her in person. And then in one of the most shameless attempts to grab ratings, Jay Leno brought up Kanye's dead mom, looking like he'd just been called into the most ghoulish principal's office in the high school of grave regrets. Let me ask something. I was fortunate enough to meet your mom and talk with your mom a number of years ago. Uh, what do you think she would have said about this? Um. Would she be disappointed in this? Would she give you a lecture? Eh, Kanye, would you, would you say she was probably uh, spinning in her grave right now, like fully rotating at high speed in her grave because of what she did, Kanye? Eh. A day after that, Taylor actually popped up on The View where she explained her thought processes at the time personally. My overall thought process went something like, wow, I can't believe I won. This is awesome. Don't trip and fall. I'm gonna get to thank the fans. This is so cool. Oh, Kanye West is here. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye West is here, cool haircut, what are you doing there? <laughs> and then, ouch, and then, I guess I'm not gonna get to thank the fans. She also said that she was still upset about it and Kanye had yet to apologize to her personally, but still saying that she would be open to accepting it. I mean, he has not personally reached out or anything, but if you wanted to say hi. He hasn't called or sent a message or an email or anything? No. And apparently after this appearance, Kanye did indeed call her personally to apologize. A conversation that was unfortunately never heard by the public, having taken place before Kanye started his habit of illegally recording phone calls. But even post-apology, Kanye was still taking big fat L's from this situation. In October, it was announced that Kanye and Lady Gaga's joint tour, Fame Kills, was canceled amid speculation that Gaga's team was livid with how Kanye had handled the whole situation. And as time went on, the legend of that I'ma let you finish moment continued to permeate pop culture as well as Kanye's tortured psyche. Taylor appeared on Saturday Night Live performing an opening monologue, referencing her need for security to stop Kanye rushing her. You might be expecting me to say something bad about Kanye <laughs> and how he ran up on the stage and ruined my VMA monologue. <sighs> but there's nothing more to say cause everything's okay, I've got security lining the stage. And the I'ma let you finish moment became one of the earliest certified Kanye memes. And in September 2010, Kanye apologized to Taylor yet again as part of one of his famous Twitter tirades that we've now all come to know as the hallmark of a celebrity entering a mental breakdown or just the president of the United States disseminating information in 2020. In that regretful tweet-a-thon, Kanye revealed that he'd actually written Taylor a song referring to her as just a little girl with dreams like the rest of us and calling himself a 32-year-old child as well as apologizing to Beyonce. A week later at the 2010 VMAs, Taylor debuts her new song, Innocent, a track that was supposedly an open letter to Kanye evidenced by her reference to him being a 32 year old child. And frankly, this was a pretty boss move by Taylor Swift, gunning for Kanye on wax, but in such a graceful and underhanded way, he didn't really have a basis to be mad or reply because Taylor was always framed as the victim. And so it was around this time, likely in response to that song, that the tide started to change and Kanye begun to see things in a slight different light. Eventually walking back his original apology to Taylor and seemingly growing tired of her constantly positioning herself as the victim so long after this incident had gone down.
After Taylor's Saturday Night Live appearance, Kanye goes on Ellen. And there he says he'll never go on stage again and describes himself as a culture soldier. I feel like in some ways, like I'm a soldier of culture. And I realize that no one wants that to be my job. And, and, and I'll never go on stage again. I'll never sit in a award show again. But will I feel convicted about things that really meant stuff to culture that constantly get denied for years and years and years and years? I'm sorry. I will. He also kind of sticks up for himself and blames it all on the Henny. Your whole world to completely crash off of a, a moment of sincerity or alcohol, whatever, or whatever it is. And from there, it looked like this culture soldier was back on the front lines fighting the good fight against Taylor Swift getting on with her life. Because in October, Ye decided to take yet another shit on Taylor, saying that it was inaccurate for her Fearless album to be nominated for the Grammy Album of the Year. And then in November, backtracking on his original apology to her, appearing in an interview going as far to say that it was disrespectful and retarded, his words, not mine, for Taylor to even be in the same category as Beyonce. And then shitting on her even more for Taylor taking advantage of the situation to get magazine covers. And then with my moment with Taylor, with this 12 year old, 18 year old girl, um, <laughs> me um, cutting her off, it showed like a lack of compassion with everything she went to, to deserve this one moment that just shouldn't, you know, that caused her to like go off and have 100 magazine covers and sell a million the first week. The, um, the, um, but, that shouldn't even be categorized with the greatest living artist that we have to date to even be put in the same category. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just disrespect was retarded. And I Once again, failing to grasp the fact that Taylor won the award for best female music video and Beyonce did win the award for best music video, a category which Taylor was not nominated in. This guy is a fucking idiot. And then later in the month, Kanye dissed Taylor once again, inexplicably saying that she should have come to his defense. So a bit more time passes and then on the 11th of June, 2013, in an interview called Behind Kanye's Mask, Ye says that he doesn't have any regrets, as well as suggesting that his original apology to Taylor was the result of peer pressure. And you know that old saying, those that don't learn from the past are doomed to repeat it? Well, it seemed like both Kanye and Taylor refused to learn from their past mistakes, when Taylor didn't seem to have the good foresight to refuse to get back on stage with Kanye West, and Kanye didn't seem to have the good foresight think of something good to say the next time that he ended up on stage with Taylor. And so it was time to settle in, grab a bowl of popcorn, and stretch out those abs ready to perform a full body cringe as we take a look at Kanye versus Taylor Embarrassment Fest round two. At the 2015 Grammys, Kanye and Taylor were photographed together looking buddy buddy. Kanye here rocking a super deep v-neck that I assume is from the Yeezy Chad Season collection. And so later on in the year, the duo, and particularly MTV, were looking to cash in on the newly established friendship between the two. And so on August the 30th, 2015, Taylor Swift was set to present Kanye West on stage with the prestigious VMA Vanguard Award. I assume getting that name from the van full of armed guards waiting by the stage for when Kanye starts exposing the New World Order. And once the big moment came, Taylor trotted out onto the stage, called Kanye her friend, before reminding everyone exactly how they met. I first met Kanye West six years ago at this show, actually. <laughs> She continued to drop positive Kanye lore, reminding everybody that College Dropout was the first album that her and her brother bought on iTunes. Kanye West's album, College Dropout, was the very first album that my brother and I ever bought on iTunes when I was 12 years old. And she even made a gag about the earlier interruption that seemed pretty lighthearted. So I guess I have to say to all the other winners tonight, I'm really happy for you. And I'ma let you finish. But Kanye West, has had one of the greatest careers of all time. And the niceties were initially returned because the first thing that Kanye did, at least when he was done shouting, bruh, bruh, was thank Taylor. First of all, thank you, Taylor, for being so gracious and giving me this award this evening. Thank you. Then going on to say how what he did to Taylor had affected his life in so many ways, and for a moment turning the speech into a big Kanye pity party. And I often think back to the first day I met you, and they say, oh, you're not that bad after all. It crosses my mind a little bit like when I go to a baseball game, Roger. and um, 60,000 people boo me. After that night, the stage was gone but the effect that it had on people remained. 
He then undercut the entire setup of him and Taylor making a truce and being friends by suggesting that MTV had only paired them up together for ratings. And look at that. You know how many times MTV ran that footage again? Because it got them more ratings. You know how many times they announced Taylor was going to give me the award because it got them more ratings? He then got everybody hyped up and full of suspense when he was musing on what he would have done differently. And I think if I had to do it all again, what would I have done? If I had a daughter at that time, would I have went on stage and grabbed the mic from someone else's? But then, rather than make a concise and pre-planned, well-thought-out point about how he and maybe everybody could do things better and learn from the past, finally collecting the redemption for his earlier transgression that this entire situation was clearly engineered to deliver, instead he just went into a rambling 11-minute mess where he flip-flopped between feeling bad for Taylor to just dissing award shows again I still don't understand award shows to exposing Justin Timberlake for crying a river when he lost an award. And bro, Justin, I ain't trying to put you on blast, but I saw that man in tears, bro. Kanye, the only loser in this venue right now is you. Somebody play some walk-off music to get this clown off the stage. And from there, he proceeded to go on a complete rambling spree like Alex Jones after a jumbo platter of chili, telling the crowd he just wanted people to like him. I just wanted people to like me more. <laughs> and admitting that he got high before he got on the stage. Did he smoke some before he came out here? <laughs> the answer is yes, I rolled up a little song. I knocked the edge off. And then ending by announcing that this entire mess turned out to be his first speech in a 2020 presidential run. As you probably could have guessed by this moment, I have decided in 2020 to run for president. <laughs> Hey, well, at least this freeform rambling mess is a darn sight more coherent than what Joe Biden does on camera. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the phone, make sure the kids hear words. Look, I don't know what the fuck Kanye was smoking before he got on stage, but all I know is I want some. Some sources say that Taylor was mortified when she realized how far off script Kanye was going, especially when he said that he'd smoked weed before he got on stage. Apparently at that point, she started edging away from Kim Kardashian, who she was standing with for a planned photo op, which was scrapped when Kanye started rambling. With pictures of this moment seemingly omitted from the broadcast, and this particular article whose headline I'm citing has been conveniently scrubbed from the internet. This incident itself was followed by even more delusional vote for Kanye tweets. And apparently following this mess of an incident, Kanye tried to make it up to Taylor by sending her an enormous flower arrangement, which Taylor posts on IG with the hashtag Kante2020, getting an ungodly amount of life. So a few months go by from here and it doesn't seem like a great deal of damage is caused as president erect Kanye and Taylor Swift seemingly remain on good terms. Despite him making a jackass of himself, once again on stage and dragging her name into yet another embarrassing mess. But as we all know, that calm would be short-lived. And in 2016, President Kanye was about to look a lot more Richard Nixon than Donald Trump. Now, three days before all of this shit went down, Kanye West tweeted, Bill Cosby innocent, which I thought is just worth pointing out, give you an idea of where this man's head is at the time. Because on February the 11th, Kanye was seen volunteering at an overcrowded homeless shelter. Oh, wait a minute, that's not a makeshift warehouse refugee camp for a bunch of stateless refugees wearing tattered rags. That's actually the Yeezy season three fashion show. Of course, the whole Kardashian clan were there looking like a platter of gone off beige meat, but as well as debuting terrible overpriced garments, the event also doubled up as a listening party for Kanye Kanye's new album, The Life of Pablo. The album included the track Famous, which was always destined to make headlines for its outrageous opening line. I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Why I made that bitch famous? Well, this caused immediate media backlash with Kanye being labeled as misogynist. And a day later, Kanye took to Twitter, famously telling the world that he had cleared these lines with Taylor Swift before they were released in a crazy tirade of tone deaf tweets. Apparently he'd asked Kim for her blessing, which somehow made it cool. Kim and Taylor are different people, you fucking idiot. And he mentioned an infamous hour-long convo with Taylor Swift where she supposedly gave her blessing. Also, apparently bitch is a term of endearment in hip-hop, just like the N-word. Hey, maybe this situation would have gone a lot better if you'd have called her that. And saying amongst other things that apparently he'd heard secondhand that Taylor had said to someone who he refuses to name at a dinner party that she can't be mad at Kanye because he made her famous. You know, forgetting the fact that she'd sold millions of records before he'd ever interrupted her. But whatever, facts don't matter when Kanye's got that henny in him. And he eventually trailed off tweeting some BS about trying to restore the feeling of DMX's music. 
which makes a lot of sense because these are the tweets of somebody that's had a few too many toots on the old crack pipe. But in a lighter response, Taylor Swift's brother recorded himself throwing his Yeezys into the trash, a move he was apparently double happy about when he found out the news later. Taylor Swift's publicist came out the following day to say that Taylor was never made aware of that particular line, calling her a bitch, whilst confirming that Kanye did indeed get in touch with her about the song, but to ask her to tweet it, something which we now know firsthand that she declined and warned him about. So my next single, I wanted you to tweet it. I guess it would just be people would be like, why is this happening? Well, the re I think there had something to do with it, probably. I mean, yeah. I need to think about it because I just need to, like, you know, you hear something for the first time and you just need to think about it. Yeah. Um, because it is absolutely crazy. So, I don't know. I mean, the launch thing, I think, I think it would be kind of confusing to people, but um, yeah, I just need yeah. to think about it. Yeah, you don't have to do you don't have to do the launch any tweet. That was just an extra idea I had. Like, I think if I launch it, it's honestly like I think it'll be less cool. Because like, I think if I launch it, it it adds this le level of criticism. And it seemed at this point the pressure was really starting to pile up on Ye. A day later, he was on SNL performing two songs from the life of Pablo, but things weren't as good as they seemed on the outside, as he was apparently recorded having a backstage meltdown, apparently livid that they had moved some stage lights that had been reflecting badly on the set. And as part of that rant, he blurted out that Taylor Swift is a fake ass. Look at that they took my stage off of SNL. Without asking me. That air Taylor Swift fake as well as bizarrely claiming to be 50% more influential than Stanley Kubrick, Picasso, and Pablo Escobar. Bro, by 50%, Stanley Kubrick, Picasso, Paul, Picasso, Picasso, and Escobar. By 50% more influential than any other human being. Now, I don't know what statistician Kanye employs on his team to calculate these things. All I know is it's probably not what they were expecting to be doing with that mathematics masters. And apparently sources say that SNL cult leader, sorry, I mean showrunner, Lorne Michaels, as well as Kim Kardashian and Kylie Jenner had to calm Kanye down and convince him not to walk off of the set just as the live broadcast was starting. And luckily, eventually they did manage to convince him to get out on the stage wearing a bomber jacket seemingly made of one of my grandma's paisley cushions. And a few days later, Taylor took to the stage at the Grammys, using her award speech to publicly roast Kanye in front of everyone for taking credit for her fame. There are going to be people along the way who will try to undercut your success or take credit for your accomplishments or your fame. But if you just focus on the work and you don't let those people sidetrack you, someday when you get where you're going, You'll look around and you will know that it was you and the people who love you who put you there. And that will be the greatest feeling in the world. Yikes, Kanye looking like a real loser out there. On April the 9th, 2016, Kanye rants on stage at the Paradise Festival about Taylor Swift, saying that that first night when he interrupted her was the beginning of the end of his life. That night when I went on stage was the beginning or the end of my life. Lady Gaga canceled the tour the next day. What? You know what night I'm talking about. Yeah. As well as once again doubling down on his no regrets position, suggesting that he had only said what everyone else was thinking. Once again, forgetting that nobody thought that Beyonce deserved Taylor Swift's award because Beyonce still won the award for best music video, a superior award to the one that Kanye interrupted Taylor getting, and Beyonce still had to give her speech to Taylor. When I just said what everybody else was thinking. So if I get in trouble for saying the truth, what's being said the rest of the time? And I had to fight every day of my life where the whole world turned against me for saying out loud what everyone else felt. Preach it. But that's the job of an artist. Yeah, apparently it's the duty of artists to publicly embarrass other artists without realizing that the artist that you're sticking up for actually got given a better accolade the same night anyway, you fucking idiot. Anyway, it turned out that Kanye wasn't the only ill-advised moron in his household willing to stick his neck on the line for Kanye's ego. Because on June the 16th in GQ, Kim Kardashian is interviewed and reiterates that Taylor okayed the track before it came out and suggesting that she had it on video. Going on to suggest that she felt 
Taylor flipped on Kanye to play the victim and get the spotlight at the Grammys, as well as suggesting that she'd had a letter from Taylor's attorney telling her to never let the footage of that phone call come out. You know, that footage that was illegally recorded under California law, the existence of which had never been discussed until this interview with Kim? You know, remember when Kanye went on that Twitter rant? He said that they'd had an hour-long convo about the song, but he never said that he was illegally recording it. I think you just implicated your husband in a crime there, Kim. Man, sometimes I wish I had a girl like Kim. Not just because she'd fit into my pocket, but more because the only thing I find sexier than a girl blabbing to GQ about my illegal wiretapping activities is an ass like a garbage bag full of coleslaw. Mm. Anyway, Kim's motor mouth prompted a response from Taylor's team, reiterating that she never denied that the convo happened, but reminding people that she'd declined to tweet the song and was not made aware that there was going to be a line calling her a bitch. And if at this point you don't think that Taylor has been subjected to enough non-consensual clout chasing slash harassment, well never fear because on June the 24th, 2016, Kanye drops the famous music video that featured a nude waxwork of Taylor Swift titties out like some sort of Pornhub Madame Two Swords. I hear they had to import 500 kilos of low-grade wax for Kim's ass alone. Of course, yet another genius music video from Kanye West camp. If by genius you mean directly plagiarised from an already existing and successful artwork called Sleep, the creator of which, Vincent Desidero, only being informed of this 50% more genius copy on the morning of its release. And of course, bonus points if you can guess who else wasn't informed of the release of this video. Bing, bing, bing! Of course, it's Taylor Swift, who came out the following day to say that she was horrified and livid with her depiction in the video. But Taylor's understandable reaction to being deep faked with an expensive nude wax model didn't stop Kim Kardashian from continuing to cyberbully her. Because after that, Kim said on her unwatchable garbage, sorry, I mean reality show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, that she wanted to defend Kanye against Taylor over the music video. I just felt like I wanted to like defend him in it. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, she legitimately, quote, says, as soon as I get on that Grammy red carpet, I'm gonna tell all the press, like I was in on it. And then she just didn't like the reaction. Yeah, and you know, just another way to play the victim. Definitely got her a lot of attention the first time. So Kim literally came up with this imaginary yarn about expecting Taylor to come out after the music video was released to surprise everyone at the Grammy saying, ha, I was in on it. My only question to Kim is why the fuck would she do that? Kanye already stole her first award moment from her. Why would she win her next Grammy and use that moment to help Kanye promo his new song dissing her? But hey, even if Kim's stupid explanation is right, let's play Ray J's advocate for a moment. Because even if Taylor had given Kanye the impression that she was down to be called a bitch in front of the whole world and then switched up on him the last minute to make him look like a fool, even that in itself would actually be a genius finesse that Kim and Kanye should have seen coming and frankly deserve to be subjected to. But the reality is they're both fucking idiots that are clearly lying to try and make themselves look better after acting like a couple of pieces of shit. But inexplicably, she continued to take Kanye's flawed position all the way back to 2009, saying that he was right to interrupt Taylor because Single Ladies was such a big song. Once again, not realizing that Single Ladies did win Music Video of the Year and that Kanye interrupted Taylor's win for Best Female Music Video, a technically lower grade category of award than Best Music Video, which Beyonce won. Yeah, Kanye, you know, definitely like hurt her years ago when he did that and but like it wasn't meant to be personal it could have been anyone because like we all know that single ladies was the biggest song of the year yeah so i think when she didn't win he just wanted to stand up for it more on this woman and that same day kim takes her stupidity to a whole new level releasing a short clip on snapchat of taylor and kanye having that phone call completely out of context only referencing the line i think me and taylor might still have sex now this clip is heavily and badly edited much like kim's body and tv show and we see taylor saying i appreciate you telling me about this. But of course the clips are all cut up to make Kanye look good and are completely devoid of any significant context. And I really appreciate you telling me about it. That's really nice. Oh yeah, I thought I just had a responsibility to you as a friend, you know, and uh, I mean, thanks for, uh, I mean, thanks for being like so cool about it. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Like, the heads up is so nice. Mm -hmm. Like, without, like, even asking or seeing if I'd be okay with it, and I just And it also seems to inadvertently reveal a very generously graceful moment from Taylor where she politely lets Kanye West off of his original interruption, but also reminding him that she was still a somebody when they first met on stage. It's not a tell story the way that it happened to you and the way that you experienced it. Like, you honestly didn't know who I was before that. It doesn't matter if I sold 7 million of that album before you did that, which is what happened. You didn't know who I was before that. 
A day after Kim leaks that video, Taylor posts a long ass notes page on her Instagram, once again reiterating that Kanye never said on that call that he was going to call her that bitch, saying that Ye promised to play her the song but didn't, and calling it character assassination, saying that she wants to be excluded from this whole narrative that she didn't ask to be part of and has continually been dragged into since 2009. But in response to that, Kim continued to double down on her high school bullying swag by tweeting that it was National Snake Day in reference to Taylor, a reference that had apparently also been popping off on Twitter when Taylor had been feuding with her ex-boyfriend Calvin Harris over some sort of ghostwriting feud. And unfortunately for Taylor, this seemed to catch on on her social medias. Taylor even addressed the cyberbullying that she had gotten in the form of constant snake emojis from her haters, but luckily she was able to finesse this particular brand of harassment into a W by using snake imagery non-stop in promotional material for her new reputation album. Which is kind of ironic because it was actually Kim Kardashian who had built her entire career off the back of receiving giant snake on the internet. Now, from that original leak from Kim's Snapchat in 2016, this feud chilled into a cold war for a few years. A lot of time passed without any major incident, and Taylor said in a Rolling Stone interview that most people didn't really understand the context or the events leading up to Kanye's famous diss song, and she was mad at numerous things he'd done up until that point, as well as confirming that she was indeed mortified when Kanye got on stage that second time collecting his Vanguard award, saying that even back then she'd received a long phone call before the award from Kanye West, where he'd asked her specifically to present him the award, yet when he got on stage and started ranting that MTV had made her present the award just because they wanted ratings. And Taylor said that it was that moment that she realised that Kanye was two-faced. And when the song Famous came out with the bitch line, that apparently was the last straw in maintaining a relationship with Kanye. As well as in the same interview, explosively suggesting that Kanye snakes Taylor in the same way that he snaked Drake by telling Pusha T about his secret love child. But ultimately, by the following year, none of that would matter. Because in March 21st, 2020, the full video of that phone call between Taylor and Kanye talking about the lyrics of Famous leaks online and leaves Kanye and Kim Kardashian looking like the real scumbags they are. Now, as we've established, this recording was illegal and taken without Taylor's consent. And while it's unclear who specifically filmed it, and even though Kim leaked it, it's clear from the footage that Kanye is the one instigating the illegal recording of the call. I'll come up with you later. All right, cool. Peace. Bye. Bye. All right, that's fine. Like, we had to get that all the way through. Yeah, sorry, the battery on this thing died. Which is why it's not uh, filming. It's just when it died. If you get some shit like Kanye talking to Taylor Swift, explain that line. Oh, I know. There's gotta be three cameras on that one. We can't miss one element. Damn, we should have illegally wiretapped that bitch three times. Anywho, when this 25 minute behemoth of a conversation leaked online, we learned a lot. Firstly, rather unsurprisingly, we learned that Kanye West treats his employees like shit. Just lock, no, you can't grab that, lock the door, sit on the as well as describing his new album as Steve Jobs music. It feels like good, it feels like real, <clears throat> I don't know, just yay, Apple, Steve Jobs type music, you know, like. I'm guessing that means it's gonna sound just like his last album with minor improvements and a doubled price tag. And he also describes himself as a cultural trillionaire, which I've gotta say is just kinda of dope. He moves around like he's like a billionaire. I'm like, yeah, I'm a cultural trillionaire. Now we've already established that he called her for the specific reason to ask her to tweet the song and was immediately rebuffed. But it's interesting to see that request in its full context because after he asks her to tweet it, she asks what is the song all about? And he tells her it's because it's got a controversial line about her in it, a line which he seems incredibly nervous about reading to her. I guess it would just be people would be like, why is this happening? Well, the re I think there has something to do with it, probably. Well, the reason, the reason why it, it would be happening is because it has a very controversial line at the beginning of the song about you. What does it say? Okay, so it says, and the song is so, so dope, and I've literally sat with my wife with my whole management team, with everything, and try to rework this line. Re I've thought about this line for eight months. I've had this line, and I've tried to rework it every which way. And the, the, the original way that I thought about it is the best way, but it's the most controversial way. So it's, it's, it's gonna go Eminem a little bit, so can you brace yourself for a second? Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, it says, wait a second, you sound sad. No, I don't think it's mean. Okay, then, then let me hear it. Okay. It says, um, and the funny thing is, when I first played it and my wife uh, heard it, she was like, huh? What? That's too crazy, blah, blah, blah. 
And then like when Ninja from um, uh, D Atwork heard it, he was like, oh my God, this is the craziest shit. This is why I love Kanye, blah, 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 that kind of thing. And now it's like my wife's favorite fucking line. I just want to give you some premise of that, right? Okay. Okay. So it says, to all my South Side niggas that know me best, I feel like Taylor Swift might owe me sex. Okay. And here we see yet another interesting tidbit that the line was originally, I feel like Taylor owes me sex. A line which some of you more diehard Kanye fans might recognize from an earlier leaked version of the song Famous that featured fellow snake enthusiast, Young Thug, where he was also alternating between Taylor Swift and Amber Rose disses. I feel like Amber Rose still owe me sex. Why I made that bitch famous? Not really, but somewhat famous. Now, when Kanye finally tells Taylor the line, Luckily, she doesn't overreact, but she did say that she would need to think about it and ironically says that she was relieved that he didn't call her a bitch. I mean, I need to think about it because I just need to like, you know, you hear something for the first time and you just need to think about it. Yeah. Um, because it is absolutely crazy. I'm glad it's not mean though. It doesn't feel mean. Um, mm. but like, oh my God, it's the build up you gave it. I thought it was going to be like that stupid dumb bitch. Like, but it's not. And it's this delicious moment that in one fell swoop proves that Kim and Kanye are complete two-faced snakes. It proves that they were really the ones that had tried to manipulate the situation and tried to paint themselves in a good light when in reality they were moving more shady than an umbrella convention in a desert. And if that wasn't yet enough nails in the coffin of Kim and Kanye's reputations, Taylor specifically called out the line, oh me sex as being misogynist, suggesting that he shouldn't give people the idea that he made her famous. And I think for a split second, it's here, right at the end of that phone call, with the song unfinished at this point, that we see the moment in response to what Taylor says that Kanye has the idea of calling her a bitch on the song. I think the like owes me sex, it, sa it says different things. It says like owes me sex means like look I made her what she is, like she actually owes me, which you know it's gonna have, it's gonna split people because people who like me are gonna be like she doesn't know, she, she, she doesn't know him shit <laughs> and like but then people who like thought it was like badass and like crazy and awesome that you're so outspoken are gonna be like, yeah, she does, it made her famous, you know? Oh shit, I know this bitch just told me not to say I made her famous, and I'ma let this bitch finish, but I'm probably gonna say I made this bitch famous. And let's not forget, in that same tirade of terrible tweets, the day after this controversy hit, Kanye had said that she had come up with the line. Although at the time, cloaked in an excuse that apparently this was something she'd said at a dinner party, it's highly possible that through Kanye's signature brand of mental gymnastics, Ye had convinced himself that the idea had come from Taylor herself. And from this point, maybe he went into another working frenzy, finished off the track and forgot to send it to Taylor. In response to the full video leaking, Taylor responded in an IG story with class and finesse, shading Kim and Ye for illegally recording her, editing that call and putting her, her family and her fans through hell for the last three years. And ending her story with a swipe up link, suggesting people donate to the World Health Organization and Feeding America to help those who need it most in the midst of this ongoing health crisis. Using all of this energy and attention from some negative bullshit to actually do some good, something I admire massively, something that I would urge all of you to do as well. And meanwhile, an example of someone with zero finesse and zero class is Kim Kardashian. Because whilst Taylor was using her platform to divert this negative attention to worthy and positive causes, Kim Kardashian was doubling down on her own stupidity. First off, saying that Taylor was the one who reignited an old exchange, calling her self-serving for doing this as millions are suffering. Very ironic, seeing as Kim K is doing fuck all but serve herself in this terrible situation, proceeding to call Taylor a liar without absolutely no basis and walking back her original position, suggesting that Kim's only qualm was Taylor lying through her publicist, suggesting that Kanye had never called her, not true, and suggesting that her and Kanye's side had never denied that the word bitch was used without permission. She's mad that you used it, not because you lied, you fucking idiot. She then quoted Taylor's publicist, saying that Taylor declined the song and cautioned him about the misogynistic message of the song, suggesting that was a lie, and finally reiterating her underlying point that Kim's issue this whole time was that she thought that Taylor was lying, saying that they had never had a conversation. Once again, an obvious lie and backtrack by Kim Kardashian that she was immediately exposed for, because Taylor's publicist immediately clapped back, reposting her original unedited statement, which directly contradicted what Kim had just said. Kim also suggested that she had never edited the footage, only posted a 
few clips on Snapchat to prove a point going on to say that the full leaked video doesn't change the narrative. Once again, proving that she is not only an idiot, but also a liar, because it was Kim Kardashian that had cherry picked select clips from a full 25 minute phone call purely for the purpose of supporting her false narrative. And for the record, Wikipedia defines editing as selecting and preparing visual media to convey information. So what you did was editing, bitch. And furthermore, she defends the illegal recording of the phone conversation, saying that Kanye has every right to document his process. Uh, no, he doesn't have the right to break California phone recording law. And then once again, she commits Olympic level mental gymnastics saying that somehow Taylor forced Kim to leak an illegally recorded phone call because of lies. Kim Kardashian is either a genuine moron with a mental deficiency or she just assumes that her audience are so stupid that they're just gonna gobble up her already debunked lies as facts. Or hey, maybe both. She then said this is the last time she's gonna speak on this because apparently nobody cares, 106k likes. And she apologizes for boring us because people are dealing with more important and serious matters. You know, the health crisis that Kim is using to hawk her shitty clothing and spreading bullshit about about how a psychic predicted this. Anywho, her sister and fellow talentless nobody, Khloe Kardashian, at this point spotted an opportunity to flush her reputation down the toilet too, and decided to weigh in, suggesting that Kim Kardashian had handled this one so well that she should be a lawyer. Imagine OJ being defended by the Kardashians in 2020. He would get a thousand fucking years. Honestly, I know Kanye has this grandiose idea about how he's an artist and he's calling Taylor Swift to tell her about his provocative art piece. But let's just take a step back for a moment. This is just a frankly stupid man suffering from bipolar disorder, calling up a famous singer to say, hey, I'm gonna publicly tell the world that you owe me sex. It's just sad really, isn't it? And this final moment, the leaking of that full phone call was truly Taylor Swift's redemption after 11 years of unwanted harassment. And I personally think Kanye West is a complete snake for making that call in the first place. Not just because he recorded it illegally and leaked it, but because he cheated and lie to all of his own fans. Because the song Famous and that particular line calling Taylor a bitch is a Taylor Swift diss no matter how you look at it. I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex why I made that bitch famous. That's a diss, his shots fired. He kept saying between the original VMA interruption and the release of Famous that he had no regrets and he only originally apologized out of peer pressure. And so I can only assume that he wanted to go after Taylor on wax on some thugged out no regret shit. And if that's how he felt as a man and as an artist, he should have stood behind Behind that sentiment on wax because then at the very least even in being the world's most hated asshole at least he would have kept some artistic integrity but he didn't and the person that he truly lied to was his fans because he wanted to have his cake by dissing taylor and embarrassing her publicly for his own image once again but he tried to eat it too by making that phone call and attempting to get ahead of the backlash before it happened and unfortunately for kanye he was too stupid to realize that by doing that, he was taking an L on every front. So that's why Kanye is an unprincipled piece of shit. And that's why Kim Kardashian is a two-faced snake. And all of that added together, is why I can never go to Calabasas now. Peace out, bitches. Boom, thanks for watching. Shout out to Current.com for sponsoring this video. Make sure that you hit that link in description and show them some love. If you're watching this live on the premiere, gang, gang, head over to twitch.tv slash Ross and come and chat with your boy live. I'm gonna be streaming immediately after this premiere and daily. If anybody wants to come and have a direct one-to-one -one chat with me, I appreciate y'all. Oh, and while we're here, I wanna give a shout out to my Patreon gang, gang. That's Duquan Jones, Ban Johnson, Jay, Chris, Sebastian Andres, Laredo, Sean Anderson, Vampires for Hire, Roberto Rosas, Mateus Marcin, Deshaun Campbell, Antonio Groza, Bash the Prince, Chris J, Claire Audient, DJ Fred 100, Griffin Fuller, Henry Bryan, Jaden Cho, Jason Wyman, Javier Gonzalez, Jessica Simmons, Kizzlebot, Naraj Shukla, Otaku VS, Penis Bang, McPenis Face, yeah, I said it, Pyromancer, Vivi, Wilson Psychedelic, and all of the other names that you see on screen right now. I appreciate everybody for showing their support. Head on over to patreon.com slash traplawross to support the channel and we're going to be making all of the money from this month. Go to Worthy Causes fighting this health crisis because it's a straight op. Thanks again for watching and make sure that you go and check out current.com with the links in my description, baby. Until next time, peace.